Let's prepare for worship.
resources you have entrusted to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated.
Sunday. And on Easter Sunday, were there a lot of people here? Yeah. We have 130 members. There were 147 people here last Sunday. <laughs> My goodness. Now, I have a question for you. Wow, it's a good day. And I'm glad to see everybody here. Do you think that we have 147 people here today? Definitely not. <laughs> You're going to end up being a pastor if you talk like that. <laughs> That's absolutely true. We have a very nice turnout. Good to see everybody here today. But uh, not exactly 147 people. Now, do you have any ideas about why that might be? Yes. Because people came out and celebrated Easter with their families. That's a very good answer. I think that's true. And I think people under yes, can I? Spring break. So people were traveling. That's true. That's true. Now I have a pastoral concern. However, when I was a kid, we learned this. Uh, See if I can still do it. This is the church, and this is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. <laughs> you all went to the same Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> now, pastors sometimes think though, that it turns out like this. This is the church, this is the steeple, it's the Sunday after we used to <laughs>
Gracious God, be to us and present with us. Favorable unto us. In the reading and preaching of the word, silence in us any voice but your own. And bestow upon us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may not only hear but integrate the truth you have for us, and go and do the same for the glory of your name. We pray. Amen. Morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The second reading, uh, in a slight change from the bulletin, I, I think, unless we've discovered uh, a few extra verses, um, is from the first letter of John, uh, chapter 1, verse, run, verse 1, uh, through chapter 2, verse 2. We, de we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hear also the gospel for this Lord's Day, and be found in page 115 in the <coughs> Bibles. John chapter 20, when we'll be reading verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. <coughs> After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sign. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered, and my Lord and my God. 
Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here is the scripture for this Lord's day. A blessing to your hearts. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and His Son Jesus Christ our blessed Lord. Well, Easter is all over, one pastor recently exclaimed. But it really isn't over, another pastor responded. After all, Easter's not just a day. It's a season of the church year. Yes, said a third pastor. In a way, you're both right. But isn't it kind of neat to remember that, that Easter's never over for Christians? In fact, every Sunday morning is a mini Easter. A friend of mine told me that his priest was disappointed that more people hadn't attended the worship services on Holy Week. This uh, friend commiserated with his priest and said to him, you know, Father, there's so much celebration at Christmas. I wonder if people understand that the death and resurrection of Jesus is just as or even more so important to our faith. Somehow they, they just don't always seem to take Holy Week and Easter personally. Yes, this morning. This morning, 
living in the power of the resurrection, I want to remind you the resurrection of Jesus Christ is personal. It is tremendously important that it be personal for you too. We can get caught up in the trappings of the holidays and and inadvertently miss the true meaning of the celebration. For example, at Christmas, there's the tree and the lights and the presents and Santa Claus. And rarely does that season go by that some pastor in any town in America doesn't preach a keep Christ in Christmas sermon. At Easter, there are flowers and new clothes and spring break and don't forget the Easter Bunny and the candy. All these exist to festively celebrate the holy days. But I wonder, is there a need for a Keep Christ in Easter sermon? Some seem to fail to catch the genuine meaning of Easter and to take Easter personally. The Lord Jesus Christ is crucified on Good Friday. He's dead, dead as a doornail. But he doesn't stay dead and is resurrected from the dead on Easter. That's what Easter is all about. Now for this to become personal, please remember that Jesus Christ was crucified for you. Understand what all his suffering was about in a very real sense, Jesus suffered his entire life. He was the servant of the Lord of hosts. And because he was a servant and the Son of God, his suffering is quite unique. He was always obedient, even when obedience was not the easy or accepted way. He suffered from repeated assaults by Satan who sought to undermine his ministry. He suffered from the hatred and the unbelief of his people who rejected him. He suffered from persecution by his enemies. He suffered his entire life, and it began when he emptied himself out of his glory. Emptied himself out of his glory so that he could come and be with his people. He chose this incredible suffering because he loved us and he was committed to redeem us. Because he loved us, he was willing to occupy a, a menial servant's position. The Son of God was willing to become incarnate man. He was willing to become poor and he was willing to be oppressed. Because he loved us, he was willing to live in this sinful, polluted atmosphere with its very nature offended his purity and his holiness. Because he loved us, he lived knowing that he would be killed by these very same people whom he loved. And so on Good Friday, he's crucified. It is the natural extension and the culmination of his suffering. He is tried and he is condemned by the Romans at the insistence of the Jews. The Jews who are the chosen people of God reject him and they insist upon his death. The Romans were their genius for, for law and justice and who represent the highest judicial power in the world at that time and the greatest military power, they cooperate in the death of Jesus. The conspiracy is complete and our Jesus is, as the scripture says, cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of his people to whom the stroke was due. He goes to the cross and he goes to death and as he goes, he carries your sin and mine there on his back. The eternal fact remains. He died for us with our sin 
and that's personal. Our sins put him on that cross, and the words he spoke haunt us when we hear him say, no greater love has any man than this, that he give up his life for his friends. Jesus Christ was crucified, dead, buried. He descended into hell. John Calvin understood this part of the creed. He descended into hell as a metaphor. This is just how horrible Christ's suffering on the cross and his death are. He really suffered the pangs of hell for you and me. He suffers hell so that we don't have to. And that's personal. The Lord Jesus is innocent and deserves none of this. We are the guilty ones. We are the ones, as we examine our hearts, know that we deserve hell. But because of him and his love for us, he pays our price. And we escape it. And so on Easter morn, this man who has done so much for us and humankind, this man, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ is resurrected. His humiliation is over and done with, and his exaltation is now about to be begun. Wherefore also God highly exalted him and gave unto him the name that's above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things on earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, Christ has met all the demands of the law. Christ has paid the price of our sin. And this sacrifice which he offers up to the Father has been received and accepted by the Father. And now resurrected in glory, resurrected for exaltation, he stands and receives the reward of his obedience. The atonement is complete. The price of our sin is satisfied, it is accepted, and God doesn't even remember our sin anymore. The resurrection stands at the heart of our faith as the seal of the covenant, the deal that God offers to us in Jesus Christ. And it shows us in this resurrection that Christ's work is complete. Christ's work is publicly accepted. In the midst of the power of the Romans, in the midst of the theology of the chosen people of God, his resurrection is publicly accepted and he is risen to begin his new life as head of the church and our universal Lord. And so what does that mean for us? It means take it personally. For you and I know that our sins have been forgiven. They've been paid for at an incredible price. We know this because of the resurrection. And we know that in Christ, we who believe in him and we who live in him, have been accepted to as brothers and sisters of Christ, the children of God. Despite all the negatives in my life, all the things that I struggle with and so often fail in, despite all of my sin, despite all of my limitations, I go back to that song that we all sang as children. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. Jesus arose for me. Jesus is resurrected and appropriates that resurrection to me. And in him I am accepted by God. And in him I shall live forever in glory. Now tell me, is there anything more personal than that? How beautifully our Lord says it in this morning's gospel lesson. He says it to Thomas. 
He says it to the disciples. He says it to us all. Are you listening? Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Do you realize this? A powerful thought. This is the Lord's last and greatest of his beatitudes. This is the last time that Jesus says those powerful words, blessed are those. Blessed are you. This is the last word of blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We who take the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ personally are most blessed for we know that the Lord who personally bore our sin in his body on the cross now lives resurrected and exalted so that we may live and be reconciled to God. We too shall be resurrected. We too can count on the fact that we shall live in him forever. We are an Easter people. We believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's personal for us. For by his death and resurrection, we know we are saved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, Linda, I'm running long today. Really? What do you think that we stand and say the creed? Amen. <laughs> People of God, please stand. <laughs> Let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, but crucified by death and birth. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For then you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. While the pastor regathers himself, changing the order of worship, let us bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord.
We offer prayers of intercession for Ernie and Bob, for Carolyn and Rebecca and Sherry, for Paul and Linda and Gooder, for Betty, for Alicia, for Tom and Marie, Anita and Tom, Arlene, Ken, Ken, David, and also for Mike facing a terminal illness. Comfort the family of Robert Weber, we, we pray. You know the stirrings in this congregation. You know the things that are afflicting us or challenging us or troubling us in our personal lives, Lord God. We, we open our hearts to you. Work powerfully in our lives for the glory of your name. Be with this church in its mission and in its ministry. Be with this community in all of its suffering and travail and trouble. Be with your denominations all around the world and work powerfully for them, uniting them in that, that great scripture that attests that Jesus Christ is Lord and that every need should bow unconfess in the Lord and Savior of all. Lord God, what a privilege and blessing it is to be called by the name of Christian. What a privilege and blessing and grace it is to be one who follows Jesus. Lord, give us Holy Spirit so that we don't let you down and we may give you glory in all things. Now be with us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 238, Thine is the Glory.
He is risen indeed. And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon and abide with you all, each and every one, now and forever. Amen.